good morning to everyone uh, joining us from us and uh, good evening to everyone who has joined us from india thank you so much for hopping on this uh, webinar uh, we have two of our guests with us they have already joined um, let me just introduce them we have peter peter um, uh, works with uh, uh, real living productions and he also runs an organization called Pub uh, public us living where he helps agents a lot of real estate agents he helps them grow their digital presence to build their digital presence and grow and utilize the digital medium to the maximum extent is that correct peter or uh, that is, would you like that to is add correct. something no it's certainly uh, that is correct thank you for having me today okay and we have matt uh, so matt is uh, uh, matt runs his own mobile real estate organization by the name phoenix mobile homes and um, he has been um, uh, he has been really active to getting uh, mobile uh, mobile homes to people in arizona is that correct matt yep, thank you correct. thank you for joining us. thank you thank you, you both of you for joining us um, let's begin discussing whatever we have on on uh, as our topic today so peter why don't we start with you you know a lot of people here have asked me a lot of times what according to you is conversational marketing there are a lot of people who have this question uh, around conversational marketing what is conversational marketing how to start conversational marketing what are those small steps that tell us that okay we are we doing conversational marketing or are we not doing conversational marketing right now absolutely so i think one of the interesting things about uh uh marketing on the internet is the aspect of conversational marketing and so what that really means to me and to what i talk to my clients about is that conversational marketing is an opportunity to get beyond forms and and beyond uh those those kind of uh corporate uh, uh marketing pitches to be more personalized in your conversation with a potential uh uh buyer if you're in the real estate industry so what that means is oftentimes it could be a uh a, a messaging app um okay. and it could be in so many different things from not just your website to potentially also your social media platforms okay understood so uh, you're basically telling that any form of conversational which is not really corporate in nature could be considered as conversational marketing or is that is that right interpretation peter you know i think it is uh, i a, an aspect of it that i see is valuable is the real time effect of it that's where the real key comes okay. into it so so if you were to have a a conversation just back and forth through email you haven't you experience a delay that's not what i really expect in conversational marketing i expect a much more instantaneous conversation happening in as we say real time okay great so the real time aspect where people are talking in individually and talking immediately is where you feel conversational marketing exists right Absolutely. matthew would you like to add to whatever peter has said yeah exactly and to sort of go off of what peter said in the past we used to always use disruptive marketing we would go out place bandit signs we would hope people would click on our ad or you know our google ad uh land on the website read through all of the content well what i'm finding is those types of marketing we're trying to sell the, the individual hey we are the best versus conversational we're able to sort of take that narrative build off it have a real time conversation as peter is saying which i've found leads to more sales uh, happier clients people that aren't aren't as skeptical of the message that you're trying to get across so for me real time or conversational marketing is being able to capture lead um walk them through the entire process answer their questions which eventually leads to the sale okay okay but but see both of you belong to this real estate industry and do you think that the real estate industry at this point needs conversational marketing have we have we faced i i am sure matthew is trying to give us an example where he has tried ads and i'm sure most of most of our audience must have tried a lot of ads based culture or ad based marketing or email based marketing where 
they used to call people using some medium but it did not used to work out so what what exactly are are we telling to the real estate industry is it ready is it not ready do you think there has to be some uh, base to be set up before uh, conversational marketing kicks in is there some some kind of uh, uh, thing that should be done before conversational marketing kicks in uh, I, i guess i'll i'll take this one no i th- i think the real estate industry is ready for it right now for example when someone lands on your website instead of them scrolling through looking for a question or looking for the answer that they're looking for they're actively going out looking for a solution and the reason why they're looking at your website in the first place is because they're motivated they need help and in order to help capture that lead we need some form of communication that will help sell them that instant so if they're you know looking for how, how do i sell my mobile home quick by having conversational marketing you can capture that lead so they don't end up on somebody else's website in a day from now so i think i think the real estate market is ready for it i think people that are taking advantage of it uh video marketing uh conversational marketing are definitely going to have a leg up on their competition okay i agree okay. with okay i agree with yeah. that on those cases and uh and and what i would say is that this is uh a form of communication that transcends all aspects whether it be uh uh max industry or apartments or or very expensive upper end price ranges uh the conversational marketing uh aspect and uh the people visiting websites today are looking for a very fast response from realtors and the people behind the website. So, you know, I I was looking at a study recently and it said that uh, when somebody asks a question or submits their information in a form, they expect a response within 2 to 10 minutes. And so, okay. if you as a realtor do not have something set up to respond to that prospect within Two to ten minutes, you have probably lost that person. lost that customer, exactly. yeah, or lost that lead of um, for any further nurturing. Agreeably, Peter. So, so yes, there have been a lot of studies which say that uh, if you cannot answer immediately, the lead is useless for it. And and in the real estate industry, I, I also read this uh, that a lot of lead calls or or the leasing calls, as we call them. are actually going on answered so i read the study which said 49% of leasing calls were actually going on answered that's a huge number is that correct peter you know i don't know the specifics of that study but i would believe that uh in a lot of cases yes they do go on answered and that can be you know, a, a lot of different things perhaps it's a scenario where a realtor has too many people giving them leads and not enough people to pick up the phone and to answer and to uh, contact these people. Uh another scenario could be that uh the lead generation uh platform that they currently have isn't working correctly and getting them the notifications that they know that a new lead has asked for information. So there's a lot of reasons that that could be uh uh missed opportunities and every time you miss an opportunity that just one more chance that you lost um, the chance to sell your product. I, I I'd like to sort of I'd like to sort of add on that and for me I personally believe in answering every call so it doesn't matter what time the lead comes in I answer every call. Okay. Mm-hmm. But there are hundreds and hundreds of people that visit my website where I'm not capturing the lead because or or in the past where I wasn't capturing a lead because I didn't have something like conversational marketing set up. So there's there's there are people that will call you, but then there's also people that don't want to call on the phone. They don't want to speak. They want they you know, they want they prefer texting. They would prefer uh, a chat bot uh to answer their simple questions. So I'd say, yeah, there's people that aren't taking calls or using, you know, uh call call centers to take their calls, but then there's also a huge portion of people that will never pick up the phone to call an individual like Peter and myself. Correct, correct. So, uh um, Matt, what do you think is current is the industry really facing any hindrances in adopting conversational marketing? Do you think it is still coming up as as uh, as a kind of a medium where uh 
people are yet not ready for accepting it or is there some technological aspect which is coming as a barrier in people accepting um, conversational marketing or or has conversational marketing started to spread in the real estate industry like wildfire I, I think the biggest hindrance is probably the investor himself getting in the way and not trusting uh, the power of the conversational marketing. I know people that, you know, they, they, they don't want to outsource. They don't want to, to trust in the technology when in reality, they need to be trusting in the technology. They need to optimize the conversational marketing. So I think, I think the, the industry itself is ready for the technology. I think it's the investor that needs to believe in it more so than um, the technology is not ready. By investor, you mean somebody who is investing in that business or, or a businessman for that matter would, would, would also be. You know, it's, it's me trusting that the technology right. will do what it's supposed to do. So I, I think- Peter, what do you have to say? One of the yeah, biggest- Sorry, sorry man. I, I agree with Matt in that scenario. I think a lot of times uh, uh, developers or uh, uh, the owners of real estate agencies may be a little bit cautious uh, because they're concerned that will this uh, uh, conversational marketing tool be able to actually answer the questions that are asked to it. So, you know, as a... Uh, um, a business owner, what I need to know is that if I have chosen a conversational marketing tool, that I can trust it and that I can rely on it and that I know that if everything is working and functioning properly and that I'm getting that uh, uh, notification that someone has been asking for information through our chat bot or through our conversational tool. Correct, correct. So uh, Pete, tell me this, um, if, if uh, whenever we say that, you know, we can start adopting conversational marketing, we need to go ahead and invest. I think there have been some questions also being asked. What do you think could be the very specific use cases of real estate industry where conversational marketing can definitely play a role? Is it probably selling more properties, selling featured properties, or especially if we were to look at look at it from an agent's perspective, do you think uh, uh, it can help you get more buyers? It can help you get more sellers? It can help you sell more uh, simpler properties or it can help you sell more featured properties? Where, which are the use cases you feel are most relevant for an agent to solve when it comes to um, conversational marketing? I think there's a couple of ways to look at it. I think for, a, uh, for an agent, uh, conversational marketing allows you to uh, possibly learn information about a buyer that, uh, that you would not find in a form. You know, the, the conversation begins and it becomes a more personalized experience, which ultimately leads to you know, more conversions and, and kind of a faster client engagement. So, but... You know, what's interesting about that as well is that, you know, every website has a form on it, but you may learn things about that buyer, that prospect through conversational marketing that is not a question okay. on your form. It then allows you to, as the realtor to say, okay, I think I have more information about this prospect. So in a way, conversational marketing allows us to, um, to learn more about our, our potential prospects um, that we wouldn't have possibly received from the forums. So guys, whoever asked this question, here's the answer. Peter wants to tell you that not just sell properties or suggest properties, but conversational marketing can help you learn about your customer better, which is an added advantage for you. Um, you might be able to sell properties eventually, even, even via a form, but conversational marketing will help you close those businesses, close those business possibilities sooner. Matt, what do you have to say as, as a developer? Uh, would you like to add something to this? Where, what are the burning issues you feel um, that can be solved by conversational marketing? Well, I agree 100% with Peter. And I sort of take a hybrid model to my business where I use conversational marketing to get people in the door, answer a lot of their questions. And then from there, I've saved myself hours and hours of responding to the same repetitive questions to the point where I've already 
um, pre-qualified the buyer. I know exactly, like Peter was saying, I know exactly what they're looking for based off the conversation that my bots had with them. And from there, I can go out and find the property that they're looking for. So it's, for me, it's start to finish and reducing the amount of time I have to invest in each potential client. Um, and then also uh, by asking them specific questions, I'm able to uh, find the exact properties that they're looking for. So there, there's a lot of aspects. Plus, uh, you know, you can, you can use it for both buyers and sellers. So I think you can uh, incorporate into your whole business. Yeah, that's true. That's true, Matt. So, um, Matt, when we say we understand a little more about the buyer or the seller or whoever is our prospective customer, when we say that we want to understand more about our prospective customer, what do you think are the parameters where, um, let, let's dig this a little deeper. What do you think are the parameters within this? So I think in our marketing language, we call it lead qualification mechanism, right? So mm -hmm. whether this buyer is good, whether this buyer is bad, whether, whether this buyer will actually purchase something from me or not, is the future decision or, or are the points, these are the points which will help me decide whether I want to spend some time on uh, or invest some time on, uh, uh, you know, talking to this guy or not, right? So what exactly helps you decide whether you want to move ahead with a certain um, individual or not? So for me, I've set up sort of if then statements. So, you know, if the person's not looking to purchase a, a mobile home within the next two months, they're probably not very motivated to purchase a mobile home. So just by asking them uh, specific questions like, okay, what's your buying timeline? Uh, what, what, do you, do you have your finances in a row? And so by that, you can ask questions like, you know, what's your credit score? You know, how much can you put down on a mobile home? Are you looking to purchase with cash? So just by asking specific questions, you can sort of characterize how qualified they are and uh, whether they're going to they're gonna make a good candidate to potentially purchase a mobile home. So we want to be spending all of our time on people that have went through the system, went through our flow that we set up and eventually get to the the final stage. And those are the people I typically reach out to. And that's when I have a conversation with them if they make it through the flow. Okay. Okay. So you have set up a flow of questions, right? Which, which includes probably their monthly income and their, uh, how quickly do they want to purchase a mobile home? Correct. And, and a lot of those questions probably could be captured within a form, but at the same time, I feel okay. like people are, more likely to fill out detailed responses through conversational marketing versus a, a form. It's just another check the box. Uh, people are saying, yes, my credit score is this, my, um, my, you know, my, my income is this versus conversational marketing. You can really get a feel for what they're looking for. They'll, they'll give you more detail, more information, which ultimately helps you find their, their dream home. Okay. One other item that I would like to add to Matt's uh, list of uh, uh, questions that he typically suggests is one that we often ask uh, about a property, be it a house or some land or whatever it may be, is what price point do they want to buy in? Are they mm -hmm. looking for uh, uh, a place that's uh, $100,000, $50,000, a million dollars? By knowing okay. that, and knowing how soon they want to buy, whether they want to buy in two months or two years from now, that also helps us determine as real estate agents and, and property sellers, how, um, how much attention we should be paying to that specific person. Yeah, that and sort of to build up that, you're also, uh, you can also ask more targeted questions like, are you an investor? So uh, for, for a real estate investor, some specialize in working with other investors, some specialize in more resident, residential where you'd be catering to a family purchasing. So you, you can really sort through who they are, you know, what type of person, what type of buyer they're going to be. Are they going to be a cash buyer, an investor that would have a hard money, quick closing, or if they're going to need traditional financing. So uh, you're not going to shop around an investment property that the you know, bank's not going to um, be able to approve a loan to uh, a person correct. looking for a turnkey property. Correct. That's absolutely correct, Matt. So Amelia has a question. 
uh, which says whether a call or a chat message, which is a more effective form of conversational marketing. I mean, I'm not sure if that's an optional question. I would say it should be chat and call, but uh, I leave it, leave it up to you guys. You can, you if you can advise Emilia, what would be better, call or chat, chat or messaging? You know, I think in the immediate uh, uh, instant, the very first engagement, that conversational uh, through uh, uh, chat is very effective. Now, when you continue this relationship with that person, it is very important to have phone calls with that person. But oftentimes, and Matt mentioned this as well, uh, uh, people are hesitant to give you their phone number right off the bat. So conversational marketing and, and through chats allows you to communicate with that person even if you don't have their telephone number. Mm -hmm. And then and for me, it, it, it really depends on the lead. If it's a seller or a buyer lead sellers, I want to be on the phone with them. The second that lead comes in, like Peter mentioned, two to 10 minutes, I'm, I'm on the phone with them trying to figure out, you know, what their scenario is. But a buyer lead is, is different for me. I want them to go through the flow. I don't, I don't want to be spending my time on a potential buyer that's not going to qualify to live in a mobile home park, not going to be, have the money to purchase a mobile home. So for me, my buyer leads, I'd prefer them to go through my forms, my chat um, chat flow, just to make sure they're qualified before I hop on the phone with them. Okay, okay. Uh, Matt, I think you, you, you had also mentioned something about um, eighth grade writing. So uh, Peter, let me just yeah. introduce one of the concepts that Matt uh, did tell me about is uh, that conversational marketing has to be very simple in language, right? It should be very simple in terms of its communication. It should be very simple in terms of understanding also. The, the, the terminology should stay the same, but the communication standard should be as low as an eighth grader. Uh, so Matt, are there any other best practices or would you like to elaborate on this best practice of conversational marketing? Of course, calling that person is that secondary part or, or let's just for now consider that as the next step. If we were to consider chat and messaging as the first step, what would be the best practices you would advise people to have? Yeah, yeah. and so to sort of elaborate on the eighth grade writing, you have to really know your clientele and, and who you're, you're speaking with. So if I was gonna go and try to either purchase a luxury home or sell a luxury home, you have to know that those people are probably better educated, more, uh, they, they, they have a, a larger vocabulary. So you probably wouldn't be using eighth grade level. But for me, a lot of the okay. people that I'm working with are more blue collar and they, they don't want to hear sophisticated words. So when I'm creating a chat flow, I'm using text conversation. I'm using, I'm not using large vocabulary words. I'm using more of a, a personal um, conversational style. So, so for me, when I'm putting together a flow, I'm, I'm not using large words. I'm, I might even include grammatical errors because that's for me, what makes the person feel comfortable uh, and ultimately convert to a lead. So I, you probably wouldn't be using grammatical errors if you're trying to sell a four million dollar house. Uh, they'd probably Absolutely think you're not. <laughs> but for me, a mobile home that has roof damage and uh, it it has soft spots on the floor, I wouldn't classify that as elegant. So <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm definitely <laughs> trying to cater to the people that I'm working with and. It's by using a small vocabulary at an eighth grade writing level. What I would like to say is I think Matt is talking fantastically about uh, the concept of understanding your buyers. And so that's exactly what Matt's talking about is uh, 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 the people that uh, are probably uh, contacting Matt are, um, and probably uh, would have a like that eighth grade level uh, education is, is a, a very standard thing. And that's not just uh, 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 for that uh, mobile home buyer. I think a lot of times we look at um, audiences and think of like, how do we keep it simple in the conversation? But we also have to understand who our buyer is and make sure that we 
uh, uh, make them feel comfortable in that conversation. So Matt's right. I think if you're looking at a buyer uh, or a um, uh, uh, if you're selling something that is um, more expensive, you know, a higher price point, let's say that $4 million uh, number that Matt threw out there, um, you probably would use different language than Matt would say in his uh, 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 conversation. I think um, the, the conversations in general would change significantly. There'd probably be much more of a, uh, a response to talking about not just the home, but what we call amenities. And, you know, is there a pool close by? Is there uh, uh, a tennis court perhaps? Or uh, mm -hmm. uh, different things that might also be associated uh, with what that buyer is interested in. So from a realtor perspective, I think it's very important that your conversational marketing be focused on the type of buyers that you typically work with as well. And then also for me, it's important. I'm, I'm located here in Phoenix, Arizona, and there's a large Hispanic community and a lot of people don't speak English. Okay. So having both the English and Spanish aspect of you know, I don't speak Spanish myself, but I can get a person through a form just by using Google Translate and converting all of my questions and answers into Spanish. So the first thing I, I do when a person contacts me is, uh, do you speak Spanish or do you prefer English? And then they can go through the separate flows. Okay. That's a great answer. And I, I agree with Matt wholeheartedly that uh, uh, that's just another really amazing dynamic in the world we live in now is that our, uh, our buyers can come from anywhere. They could be in, uh, in our backyard or they could be in a whole different country. So we have to keep that in mind and, and try to find ways around language barriers should they be uh, in existence. Now, so uh, Peter, that's, that's a great answer. So, and, and Matt, thank you so much for bringing this aspect of, of uh, being language agnostic or being nationality agnostic whenever we are uh, targeting any form of buyers, right? Because logically we are telling that everybody, everything is being globalized and there are a lot of, uh, there might be a lot of people uh, on the other side of the world, probably in India and China, aiming for buying real estate in US. So uh, mm -hmm. you might have to cater to them too. Uh, so when, do you think that according to the buyer, your information that you give, of course, the language changes, how different is the information you're providing? I think Peter, you, you uh, touched upon the facts that you would like to tell him about the amenities being given or the space around, but uh, other than that, do you think in terms of the questions that uh, a mobile home buyer might have or a $4 million house buyer might have, how different would these questions be? I don't think they're dramatically different. I mean, ultimately, these people, either the people looking in the mobile home and the people looking in the $4 million range, they just genuinely want a place to live that they can call their okay. own. So uh, uh, I think, and I think that the uh, messaging behind that is really how do you uh, communicate well with that person to make them feel comfortable in believing that your property is right for them, and that transcends from the very lowest. Uh, 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 sales to the most expensive sales as well. No, so, uh, see, I think, I, let me just clarify this question a little bit more. Uh, let's say you have a website, let's say an agent has a website, mm -hmm. uh, and they have properties at both ends, the economical one or the lux and the luxury ones. And they are having these conversational, they are deploying these conversational marketing tech tactics using some technology. Do you think the same script will run for the entire spectrum or will they have to change depending upon, uh, will the script change depending upon the kind of uh, uh, real estate they are interested in? Yeah, pardon me. Uh, the, the script would change 
in my opinion, in that scenario. I think uh, uh, as uh, the conversation continues, we understand this buyer better and we say, okay, this buyer is looking for a more important, uh, more expensive piece of property or a more affordable piece of property. And this buyer is looking for five bedrooms. This buyer is looking for two bedrooms. So I, the conversation changes based on a series of different questions to really tailor it more specifically to what they would be interested in buying. But you're still telling that it'll, it'll change objectively on, on the probably the bedrooms or, or the floor plans, right? On, on the language or you yeah, stay you the probably, same. Matt, what do you have to you, say about that? You could probably start with a template. It would be the same real estate template. But like Peter was saying, the second that they get to the question that asks, hey, you know, what's your price point? Uh, that would weed out, okay, this person goes down a flow of a mobile home or something in the mobile home price range, or this person is more luxury. And, and to sort of go back to the previous question, uh, a mobile home is gonna offer different amenities than the high-end uh, piece of real estate, which would have the tennis court, the golf course nearby. So I think your, your general questions of weeding a, a potential buyer out are gonna be similar but your flow is going to split at some point when it gets to, okay, this person's more qualified to purchase a mobile home versus, you know, luxury real estate. So you can still, I, th okay. I think from you guys standpoint where you're creating a chat bot, you would start with a, a real estate template and then it would allow for variations and okay, this is how you, you, you funnel someone into this economic price point versus the high end price point. Okay. Uh, so first of all, uh, uh, I'd like to advise everybody who has, who is attending right now. Uh, if they have questions, it's, it's your time. You can start popping all of these questions. You can ask both of our experts what they think. Uh, moving on. So Peter, can you, can you run us through what kind of tech stack do agents use? What is it? So we, we, we both agree that, you know, technology would be required if, if conversational marketing is to be done at scale. And we feel that, yes, the industry is ready to accept this kind of technology, right? But uh, is there a location in this tech stack that can be fulfilled, uh, which or, or a spot which is specifically missing and a conversational marketing tool can come and fill that spot. So what does a tech stack look like on a general le level for, an, for a real estate agent? And at what position does conversational marketing fit in? I feel like the conversational marketing aspect works as an assistant to uh, the lead generation process. I think it uh, does a very good job at the start of an engagement uh, and uh, it, it answers some very specific questions. Who is this person? What are they searching for? And in turn, uh, it can provide some valuable resources. I think there's even ways to possibly, uh, uh, through uh, conversational marketing, to share uh, um, things like perhaps a brochure. Maybe we've created a floor plan uh, presentation that could be okay. shared through conversational marketing. So I a see- A floor plan presentation, correct? Yes, I see those types of things as being uh, very instantaneous, meaning that if it's late at night and all of the realtors are asleep and somebody is reaching out, they could still get access to a floor plan presentation through an automated conversational marketing um, uh, platform. Okay. Uh, Matthew, do you feel there is there is specific position or there is a specific link in that tech stack that is missing and that needs to be um, uh, that needs to be uh, you know sort of covered by conversational marketing tools? Yeah. I, I... I just, I, I agree with Peter uh, when he's saying it's sort of like a hybrid model where it should complement what you're doing currently. Um, I still think real estate investors, uh, realtors should have their websites. They should have door mailers. Um, 
or direct mail, door hangers. I, I think real estate investors should still be doing that. But when they land on your website, that's where conversational marketing helps capture the lead. Uh, for example, like when Peter said, if you're sleeping, there's a lot of times I can see traffic on my website late at night where I'm not necessarily capable or able to answer questions. So I think real estate investors should still be doing the traditional types of marketing, but I think you'll see conversational marketing come more to the forefront in the coming years to help assist uh, with the, the traditional types of marketing. What about social media? Do you think their their social uh, conversational marketing can help? I I don't know. What, um, I have seen a few realtors run lead generation campaigns on Facebook, and then eventually uh, bring this person to converse with a bot over Facebook or Messenger or WhatsApp, and then probably gather the lead information or qualification information. Have you have you seen such stuff? Uh, yeah. Is there, is there some specific use case that you'd like to highlight? And nowadays, you can even order a pizza off conversational marketing. Like you're seeing phenomenon <laughs> yeah. uh, where you, you can order a pizza through Facebook Messenger. So I think you're going to see more and more people using conversational marketing uh, to supplement the Facebook market, you know, the Facebook ads, get them to your, your Facebook page. And then from there, that's when the conversational marketing kicks in. So I, I think you're just going to see it. Not, not necessarily just in the real estate industry, but every industry has to adapt to the people that want to purchase stuff now. That, you know, they want their, their answers now. So. I agree with Matt on that topic. I think a lot of people are very active on Facebook and, and reaching out. Uh, but this also poses a challenge for real estate people as well. Oftentimes, uh, we've found when we're running a Facebook marketing campaign, uh, is that the, the people who fill the forms out or begin the conversations really aren't necessarily qualified all the time. Uh, a lot of times we uh, uh, find that they're just are curious, but they really have no intention of buying. Um, and so okay. I think conversational marketing can help uh, uh, address the question that curious people may have without tying up time that a realtor or someone like Matt may have to spend uh, uh, talking to this person because if it can be done through AI and through conversational marketing, Matt can just look and say, this person really isn't that qualified or that interested. Uh, and, and so um, while Facebook and social media can bring you a lot of leads, conversational marketing acts kind of as a filter to, to get you the really qualified ones to come through, I think. Correct. So, Peter, if, if today you were to select a tool for conversational marketing, what would you look for in that tool? What are the things that you feel should be there in the tool? Ad adaptability having the opportunity okay. to uh, come up with the questions and, and know that our conversational marketing tool uh, uh, has a great ability to respond to that question. Okay. Uh, so we wanna be, be sure to test that quite often. Uh, uh, another thing that I would really like to know more is when my uh, uh, conversational marketing tool might be able to uh, do some research on who these prospects are. So if there are these tools out there that not only can say, carry a conversation on with uh, this person, but perhaps can tell me the realtor that uh, uh, Matthew lives in Phoenix and Matthew can probably afford this type of home, uh, uh, that's a very valuable thing for a real estate person to know those types of information. So uh, uh, I, I think there's a lot of interest in, in aspects like that. So uh, let me just reiterate the uh, robustness of the tool, probably. Yeah. Um, and it's real time answering tactic and uh, probably a method of qualifying the leads right uh, or or you know having a methodology of qualifying the leads 
So definitely, there are many tools available in the market, what not being one of them. Matt, would you like to tell us something? What kind of tool would you select? If today you were to select a, a tool, what would that look like? For me, I, I'm, I'm a real estate investor. So for me, a tool has to be easy to pick up. It has to be uh, something that I can pick up or I can outsource uh, because my, my time spent managing leads, talking to customers. So it's got to be easy to use. And then also it's got to be able to use over multiple different platforms. So it's got to be able to incorporate into my website, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, so it has to have that cross function uh, capability where you can use it over different platforms and everything syncs together. So uh, for me, it has to be able to work on Facebook, um, and those leads have to be able to get imported into my CRM, which is a different tool. Uh, so just something that's easy to pick up where I don't have to spend a lot of time up front and then having that function capability. Easy to pick and easy to deploy probably? Yep, yep, correct. Yeah, okay. Uh, so I think Douglas also has a question. Uh, he's asking, are there tools that offer language options to prospects? Yes, Douglas, uh, I would recommend if you try Whatnot, uh, it offers multilingual chatbots. You can configure it in any language that you want to. And then there is another question, which, uh, which is about what would be the best method to design the flow to get best results? So let's say you have selected a bot. Now you need to design these conversations. So what would be your tactic? How would you actually decide uh, what should be the flow? Is there, do, would you create a flow chart first or would you like to actually feel the conversation yourself or, or how would you like to uh, design the flow of this uh, chatbot? Matt, you wanna start with that one? Yeah, so for me, I know the qualified buyer, it's like five or six different criteria, right? They don't have an eviction on the record. They don't have a felony. They have a decent credit score. Uh, they have money to purchase the home and uh, they're, they're looking to buy it right now. So I have like five or six different criteria. Now, in order to um, figure out if a person's qualified, I got to ask those five or six questions. So that's how I base my flow off of, you know, making sure that they meet all, all of the criteria. Now there's, there's other okay. ways to do it. Like there's templates uh, that you could potentially follow uh, some of the, the chat box or templates. So not every uh, question or answer might necessarily fit my criteria, but it's a good starting place. And it's, it, it's done by uh, the chat box companies that have done the research on flows that work. Uh, so that's, that's how I typically start. I, I have my five or six criteria that I'm trying to meet and figure out okay. the answers. And uh, it's just working them through the progression of questions. Okay, so whoever asked that, yeah, Peter, would you like to add something to that? Oh, I was going to agree with Matt on that. Likewise, we have uh, uh, kind of a, a criteria list of questions that we look for, uh, and and personally, I think it's uh, 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 you should think with your team what are the questions and the qualifications that. Uh, make a candidate a best fit for ownership with one of your properties as well. Know your okay. buyer. Know your buyer. Yes, it comes back to coming comes back to that. Very important to know your buyer, and conversational marketing will help you know your buyer. Now, so John Riley has asked this question, and let me just put it in different words. Uh, he's asking, "How do I scale conversational marketing?" Now. What this, what it, what he really means is, uh, of course, scaling uh, should not. While scaling, one should not lose the essence of what they are trying to communicate. Right? Uh, scaling, you you pick up a tool, you can you can then communicate with an n n number of people. But how can you scale without actually losing the essence of your final outcome? How can you do that? Are there some advices for John? Yeah, from scaling, uh, I, I think one of the things that I focus on is um, how to, uh, to address the questions that the buyer is looking for 
and to uh, uh, just really um, expand on that and to kind of build the, um, the, uh, the, the, the focus of that buyer's request through that conversation. Um, Matt, what about you? Do you have a con an answer to that? For, for me, I, I, I like to, uh, conversational marketing has allowed me to scale my business. I'm not sure if this is exactly what you're asking, but for me, it's, it's allowed me to scale my business by being able to step away from a lot of aspects of the business. So first I incorporate, incorporated the, the conversational marketing into just qualifying buyers uh, which allowed me to free up a lot of my time. And then I realized, well, shoot, I can also incorporate this into other aspects of my business, like, uh, you know, speaking to potential sellers, uh, qualifying seller leads. So for me, it's allowed me to scale my business that way, where, you know, I first started with a small scope and I've grown it over the past couple of years. Okay. John, sure hope that answer. answers your question. Um, Basically, if you start with a small scope, you move towards a larger problem that you have to solve and, uh, you know, make sure you're still maintaining the essence of whatever you're doing. Peter, is that correct? Or, or would you like to advise something to John? Yeah, I do agree with that. I think that is correct. So starting with the, the small conversation, building up and, and really kind of starting to address what they may be searching for, what their goals are and what they hope to purchase, uh, uh, the conversation can evolve dramatically. And so uh, this is another thing where I had mentioned earlier, perhaps something like uh, uh, having access to, you know, other resources outside of just simply the conversation. So perhaps the conversation is carrying on and then you find yourself, uh, uh, maybe there's an opportunity to provide a, a brochure, a floor plan brochure. Perhaps there's uh, an interview with uh, the developer or testimonial okay. videos with, uh, with somebody that currently lives on the property. Uh, so there's a lot of other uses that I think can be blended in with the conversational market as you proceed. I think I'm also seeing a lot of options where people are also, you know, con within conversational marketing, they are providing a lot of virtual tours. So that also could be one of these things where you, where you scale and you talk about your virtual tour or a virtual tour of your property or maybe virtual tour of, of the other things around your property, right? Oh, I agree very much so. I mean, there's a lot of opportunity to not just focus on specifically that property, but, but so much of what is around that also. And there's oftentimes perhaps... Uh, uh, if you are uh, uh, entertaining a, a prospect and you identify that, yes, they were interested in this, but once they really start to learn about it, they're not as interested, but they might be interested in something else that you also offer. So having these conversations can really identify where the best place and the preference of that buyer is as well. Correct, correct. John, hope that answers your question. Moving on, Matt, Peter, what do you envision as a realtor or as a person from the real estate industry? What do you feel? Where is this industry eventually going? Do you think intelligence, artificial intelligence is taking over or is there, is there something that can be, is there something that is still missing in the real estate industry? Is there something that needs to be fixed and made better in the real estate industry? Is there a process that is missing, which you might have seen in some other industry, but needs to be implemented even better in real estate specifically? I think one thing that I've noticed a lot over the past year, especially uh, uh, in the United States and, and around the world, COVID-19 has made uh, the home buying process extremely more uh, uh, computer oriented. So people are are contacting based on visiting websites and speaking through uh, uh, automated uh, uh, um, software. But one of the things that we also see uh, um, on the horizon for the industry is a focus on augmented reality. And so that may okay. be a, a conversation on another day, but augmented reality is ultimately 
uh, when you have the ability to, um, uh, to, to hold your, your phone up and see uh, uh, the inside of an interior around you. And so there's, it's very fascinating to envision what the future holds. And I think it's a much more uh, sophisticated and reliant technology-based uh, uh, presentation going forward. It's much more of what can I learn at home without having to meet that realtor face-to-face. So I think you're going to continue to see uh, the evolution of um, conversational marketing, of things like right. augmented reality, and, and really that internet uh, uh, home buying experience. Okay, great answer, Pete. Matt, what about you? Where where do you think is the real estate industry heading? I agree with Pete 100%, Peter 100%. I think if realtors and real estate investors aren't willing to adapt with the changing technology, they're, they're not going to be relevant any longer. And you look okay. at uh, people that are adapting to Facebook marketing, pay-per-click, retargeting, uh, just constantly staying in front of people, staying relevant. If, if realtors aren't willing to accept the reality that technology is going to play a larger role going forward, I, I think they're going to be losing on a, on a lot, of, lot of business. And I think conversation is part of the ever-changing technology scene. Great. Sorry, sorry to have interrupted you, Matt, but uh, great answers, Matt and Peter. Thank you. Um, thank you for both of, these, both of these answers. If there are any other questions from the audience, anybody else, if they would like to ask anything, uh, we have somewhere, you know, moved from a, a lot of, uh, we, have, we have moved through a spectrum of questions, including lead qualification, lead generation, and probably even the future that these guys envision for the real estate industry. Uh, I hope it has um, answered many of your questions or uh, it has at least told you where the industry is moving and why conversational marketing is, is the key for you to succeed in this industry. Um, is, are there any more questions that you would want these guys to answer? Okay. I think that's it, Pete, Matt. Uh, thank you so much, both of you. It has been a great session uh, talking to both of you. Um, I hope to have many more like this in the future. Thank you so much, uh, Peter. Thank you so much, Matt. Anything you would like You're to welcome. add at the end? Thank you so much for having us. Uh, and uh, I think uh, uh, this is a very fascinating conversation and very much uh, a part of today's real estate world. So uh, very uh, 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 good idea for a topic. So thanks for having us. Thanks, Peter. Matt? Yeah, and thanks for having, having, you, having us. Peter, nice meeting you. Uh, and hopefully everyone stays safe going forward and it, we'll, we'll see what another year of COVID brings as far as technology and uh, the changing technology in the, the real estate business. Yes, let's, let's hope for the best for everyone. Thank you so much, all of you, for joining us today. Um, thanks. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Thank Bye. you.